Yes, iPad OS 13.1 is finally here. So in this video, I'm going to show you my five favorite new features of iPad OS. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record and release your best music. And I do a lot of my music creation on my iPad. So when I heard about iPad OS, I thought it was going to be a game changer. And I'm happy to say that I think it is is you make up your own mind because we're going to count down my favorite five new features. Let's jump into it with number one. And that is this, the ability to use a mouse with my iPad. So iPad OS 13.1 and iOS 13.1 means that we can now use a mouse on your iPhone or your iPad. Now you might be thinking, is that something I really want to do? Isn't the whole point of a touchscreen to be a touchscreen? Well, I found it super useful, not only for being able to show you things on tutorials that I'm doing here, but also for clicking around, for dragging things, and even for doing some of my audio editing over here in GarageBand. It's been a lot easier to sort of drag things around and actually move different items around in GarageBand. So mouse support is my number one on my top five list. Now there's a video linked up the top there that will show you how to actually set up your mouse support and how to get everything working. And that'll also be in the description and at the end of this one. So I won't go into the details, but you can change the color. I've got red here. You can change the speed and you can change the actions as well. So I've got my middle button here to be my app switcher, which is super handy to move around between your different apps. And there's a heap of customizable options that you can jump into. So check out that other video and start playing with your mouse support. Feature number two is USB flash drive support. So yes, you can see over here, if I reach around, we've got two drives plugged in here. I'll unplug those. So I have a USB drive here, a flash drive, a SanDisk cruiser, and I also have my Kingston SD card reader. So if you've got a digital SLR or a digital camera, you can actually use that here. Now, what you'll notice here is I've got my powered USB hub plugged in over here, as well as my lightning to USB adapter. Now, they're pretty essential pieces of kit because, believe it or not, things like this are used too much power to plug straight in even to a lightning to usb 3 adapter you need to either use the lightning port there to provide additional power or have something like a powered hub so i suggest getting a powered hub and a lightning to usb 3 adapter and then you're set and there's links down in the description to where you can pick those up but once we're connected up what we can do is yes we can grab our little flash drive here we can carefully plug it in and what happens over here on our screen? It pops straight up. We can click straight into that and we can jump in here. Now, people have been asking, yes, you can, obviously you can select files in here. You can move them, you can copy them, you can do things. Can you actually play things like video files and audio files? Well, I'm glad you asked because here's one I prepared earlier. Here's my recent video uh, that I did about USB flash drives, getting a bit meta here. I can bring this up, I can hit play. And there I go, I can start talking. I could USB even turn my volume up there. For the iPhone, iOS 13 brings files integration, meaning you can transfer. It sure does, Mr. Man. And uh, you can see there that it's, uh, yeah, very cool. And uh, yes, if you've got a larger file, it's only going to be USB 2 in the case of most of these flash drives. So it's not going to be super duper quick with your file transfers. And if you're playing, you know, high res 4K video, you might get some buffering and some stuttering. But for your basic operations, I've found it super cool. Let's quickly show you the SD card reader here as well. So we'll plug that one in over there. And yes, you can, not daisy chain, but you can plug in in parallel a bunch of different things as well. So we've got my mouse and keyboard. We've also got these in here. So there you go. We can jump in. You can go in here. You can look at all of your files here. You can bring up your pictures and you can copy these either to your camera roll or just right here into the files app. And you can do multi-select and multi-touch select and all the other cool things you've been able to do for a long time. So if you want to learn more about those, once again, another video linked up the top there and down in the description description that you can check out. But let's move on to my third favorite feature. And you have been looking at it this whole time. It is dark mode. Yes, I do love me some dark mode and I promise I'll stop saying dark mode soon. But you can see here the difference that we have here in the files app. GarageBand's always been kind of dark as well, uh, but it's just a much nicer view here. And when I show you in a moment, when I put it back onto light mode, you'll see the difference. So I've actually got my right button here, it goes to my little uh, app here and I can go to the control center. And I've actually got it set up in my control center to enable 
dark mode and light mode. So if we go to light mode, oh my eyes, it burns. So yeah, you can see the difference that you get there between the two modes. And if we want to go back, because I want to go back, I want to go back now, go back to our control center and go there to our dark mode. So yes, you can go in and set it up in the, the dark, in the control center. Uh, just search dark mode. If you're in your settings, you'll be able to find it pretty easily. And there's plenty of other places, but if you've got questions about dark mode, let me know down in the comments, but pretty cool. I don't think I'll ever use light mode again now that I've joined the dark side. Feature number four that I love about iPad OS 13.1 and iOS 13.1 because they both have this feature as well, and that is zip natively integrated into here. So if I want to grab something like a GarageBand project here, I can press the more button down here in the bottom right, and I can click on compress. And this is going to create a zip file of that project. Now this is great for things like GarageBand iOS projects that aren't compatible with things like Google Drive and Dropbox and USB drives because what I can do now is I can select this file, this zip file, and I can move it over to, if we click on move there, I can move it over to anywhere I like and including, yes you guessed it, my flash drives here. So if I wanted to put it over here onto my flash drive, I need to just select that, I select copy and boom, it goes over, it's copying that file over and again, not the snappiest, speed's not going to be super great, but it's a pretty cool function. And now there it is. I can unplug that one now and plug that in anywhere else and make a backup copy of that. And you can do multiple files. You can do a bunch of things with the zip function. And yes, there's another video linked up the top there that shows you all about this function if you want to learn more. But you can zip and as unzipping is as easy as clicking on that one again. It's going to open the file. It's going to put it right here in the same location and you're going to be ready and good to go. So that is a super cool option that we have here on the iPad OS 13. And finally, tip number five, and this is something that I've been waiting for for a long time, and that is the ability to actually download. We've got a download manager built right into Safari here now. So yes, we can download files and we can actually use them. So I've just done one there, but let's just redo this. I'm here on freesound.org, my favorite browser, and let's just type loops because you know what? That's a generic term that there's going to be something on here. So there's going to be a bunch of loops here, but if we just wanted this one, what we can do is we can click or tap on that one and over here on the right we can tap on download now it's going to bring this up and but previously in safari all you could do was view what we can now do is download so if we click on or tap on the download option look at what's happening up here we've got a little download indicator so if we click or tap on that one we can see it's downloading this audio file and it's downloading this into a downloads folder right in our files app so we'll wait for that one to download it's nearly there. It's only two megabytes. It has downloaded now. If we switch apps, so I'll click my middle button because I got that set up. Go over to my files. We'll scroll down and what you'll see is under favorites here, we have a downloads folder and boom, there is our file ready for us to use. So we can click it to just bring it up and we can hit play. I don't even know what this loop is going to be. Let's uh, find out. That's a pretty cool loop. I might actually use that in something. Uh, we can click done on that one and then we can use this file anywhere. So we can select it here. We can tap on it there. We can move it. Say we wanted to put it straight into our GarageBand file transfer folder. No problem on my iPad. GarageBand for iOS, GarageBand file transfer. Copy it there and then we're good to go. It's going to be over here in our GarageBand ready to use. We want to actually create a new project and we want to put it in there. We can go ahead and do that straight away. So that is pretty pretty cool. And yes, any other file type that we can get here, we can download. And don't forget, you can then zip them up using that other cool feature. So the download manager here in iPad OS 13.1 and iOS 13 is super cool. Once again, check the link because there's a complete video up the top there showing you all about the file manager as well. That is going to do it. My five favorite features. My question for you, what is your favorite new feature? Is it dark mode? Is it the file browser? Is is it the ability to zip? Is it USB file storage? Let me know down in the comments. And if you've got other great tips and suggestions, pass those on and we can include those in future videos. I hope you found this useful. I hope that you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon. There's two more videos linked down below and I'm going to see you next time.